Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining 10 Minute Tuesdays with Seku Tyler. Uh, I am excited to have my bro on here, the co-founder of Be Data Lit, my dog, Alan Hillary. What's up, man? Hey, hey everyone. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I was so happy to see um email from your producers. So that means that I actually <laughs> made it <I'm> famous. <laughs> I'm on the Seku Tyler show. So I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I appreciate it. When he means producers, he means me. Uh, a one one man team uh, running this all. Um, right but but, right but thank you, but thank you so much for joining, man. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Y'all know the drill. Ten minutes and let's go. So Alan, let's go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Yeah. So I'm Alan Hillary. As you heard, I am a co-founder of Be Data Lit, which is a nonprofit that helps data literacy advocates have more resources to make people more familiar with data. In addition, I am an adjunct professor at City College of New York, my alma mater, where I teach Bridge to Success, as well as Macaulay Honors College, both part of CUNY, where I um, teach about W.E. Du Bois and his sociological approach. Um, so that, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Love it. Love it. So y'all hear the education. Y'all y'all hear the um, the path and, and all the things he has his hands in. Alan is a great person. If, if you don't know, we've also uh, partner and we're founders of the Dubois Challenge, but that's something for a later date we can get into. I know um, we can plug it today, too. Don't worry, right. I plug it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So we got the introduction. So really, it was, we, you know, we just heard you you're doing education, uh, co-founder and all that stuff. But what really compelled you to actually get into data to begin with? All right. Yeah. So I am, I, I graduated as a civil engineer and I'm three years into engineering, I decided I didn't really want to continue on with it from a consulting point of view. So while I was there, I had this database project where I had to collect all this information on street signs in New York City. And that kind of made me more interested in SQL. And I went back, you know, night school for database design. And from there, I just progressed into more and more data analyst roles. I was in corporate for too long, 20 years. So, and then that's what really got me involved in data. Like I just love, I love databases. I like the way they're structured. I like SQL language. And then again, as I got more into my career, I loved analyzing customer behavior. So at the peak of my, when I was in the corporate world data, being a data analyst, I, we were looking at customer behavior, trying to understand, you know, what customers like about particular products and also just to get to understand like how to market to them better. That's, that's awesome. One, I just learned something brand new. I had no idea that you were in customer data. So I actually need to pick your brain offline uh, about a use case that I'm, I'm actually thinking about. Um, but then, too, wow, I didn't know you were a civil engineer either. Like, that's that's really fascinating. I, I had no idea. Yeah, I really like math. So, I mean, I I like math. I If I had my way, I would have been like someone who was designing New York, like subways. New York City already had one, but it, it was a very specialized field. I probably just didn't have the patience to work my way up into it. But <laughs> I, um, I really like trains. So that was one of the reasons I did engineering, the math. I was good at math. So Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So 20 years in the game of corporate and three years civil engineering and just a lot of experience. But with the in the experience, there have some been some things that you probably didn't like. So to date, what has been your least favorite job that you had? <laughs> I got this question. I was like, oh, gosh, I got to do this. All right. So I had this consulting job where it just was a very it wasn't a really good experience. Like, there, the communication was bad. There wasn't a lot of training. You know, it's one thing to run with things and try to figure it out, but you still need some sort of guidance. So that, to me, was one of my worst experiences that I had as far as my career. Yeah, the the training and, and lack of uh, resources at times can make things so much difficult, more difficult than they need to be. Yeah, and also just not vibing with your manager. Like, yeah. Your manager can make a break. Yeah. Your yeah. Your career or your role. So, yeah. hundred percent. Leadership can definitely play a big impact in, into your journey. Um, all right. So understanding that we talked about, you know, least favorite thing um, from a corporate standpoint, you were in corporate world 20 years, but then, you know, out of it doing your own thing. But you've learned a lot of things. So what do you think has been your biggest failure? And then what do you really take away from that experience? Uh, biggest failure. I like to call them life lessons, <laughs> but I would say that 
a few things that I would point out is try not to compare yourself to other people. Like, you know, a lot of times I've done that. I admit it. And then, you know, I don't do it as much anymore, but back then, of course, you're trying to do, you're doing that. You're thinking, oh, I don't have this. What I would say is that you have to try to find your own superpower. And with that, you, so, you know, you may not have, approach a problem like you and I may not approach a problem the same way but if we work together we in which we do <laughs> um we complement each other so I mean you have don't oh you know I'm not like say cool I you know like say who can just rattle off ideas I mean I tend to take more time so I don't get caught up in stuff like that anymore like you know you just try to find your own superpower so that's definitely one lesson that I've learned another one is this one makes me cringe because I'm still learning it. <laughs> Done is better than perfect. So I'm a recovering perfectionist. My name is Alan. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And so, and I didn't think I was one. I guess most people who have issues don't, but it's just, I didn't think I was one, but I am. And so I was just like, you know, done is better than perfect. Cause like right now I have a presentation later today and I was like doing the presentation. I had to come to a point where it's like, you know what? It's done. I can't work on it anymore. And so that one, because sometimes I say perfect is better than done. That's the perfectionist in me. It's the other way around. <laughs> done, is better than, <laughs> done is better than perfect. So that's why I have a lesson. Oh, great. Those are really valuable lessons. I've, I've dealt with both of those myself. So the comparison mechanism for sure, right? This person's great at this. They do this. And sometimes you just got to ground yourself like here's what I am good at and here's what I bring to the table. Um, so that that journey has been there and then done is better than perfect. Like I remember um, Dr. Dre, right? He's creating a detox and it was like detox has never came out. And it was like I remember just being like uh, the, the creative process, like you have to be so in the weeds to be like, here's this project I've been working on for 15 years that I'm not going to release. Mm -hmm. Like at some point you have to pull the trigger and be like, this is done. Like I have to release this or move on to something else. Um, so I totally understand that part. Yeah, it's it's true. Like I um yeah, there's so many things. I mean, some of the things that we're doing, like, you know, we can plug it now with the Boy Challenge. Just like it started with a conversation between you and I, right? And you're like, oh, why don't we do this, this, and that? And then I'm like, sure, let me go reach out. To, you know, so we just ran with it and we've been running with it for like three years. And like it's just, yeah, it just we just took that leap of faith with that. So that's definitely a good example of the um, done is better than perfect. So yeah. and we've actually grown. We got a new team member. So yeah, I know it's it's been amazing to see just a an idea, just to be like, hey, we should do this, or um, you know, let's let's just let's just go. We don't know where it's gonna lead, but let's just do it. Yeah. So with that in mind, uh, again, talk about corporate experience. You've been in it twenty years. You got your own experience as well. Um, a lot of things, a lot of lessons. But what do you think? What's one lesson that your job or anything that you've done has taught you that you think everyone should uh, learn at some point in their life? Hmm. I mean, I'm really still thinking done is better than perfect. It's one of the. But let's see. Um, another thing that I've learned. Um. I mean, I guess the two things combined that I shared is yeah. will say that you have to have faith in yourself, like, you know, and you have to have faith in yourself. And a lot of the things that we talk about in the data world, you know, from our industry is like who the face of data is and like that, I guess, imposter syndrome, like just learning not to let that stop you from what you want to do or get caught up in definitions uh, if that makes any sense like and when I say definitions like either job titles or career titles or you know just don't let those things limit you from an idea that you have yeah yeah I agree 100 percent. The, the comparison mechanism or I'm not this or I don't have this title so I shouldn't go for this or you know all, all that yeah. can can sway a lot of people I, I've been a, a product of that for sure myself so uh all right cool so got that got the career stuff so now tell me about the most influential people in your life and how they have impacted you <laughs> this was the other question I was like uh all right uh um I'm just gonna roll with it right done is better than perfect so um <laughs> I have so uh, this is going to sound cliche, but my parents were two of the influential people and I have a third or fourth, but, but, but my parents, like my dad, very hardworking person. Um, we, we had, we had a, 
um, complicated relationship. So I, I learned from him, you know, just watching his hardworking, you know, that part of him. But also my dad was some, was very critical and of me and my brother. And he didn't always shell out the praises. And so I think that has always kind of stuck with me, you know, in terms of like things that I wish I would have had category. So what I like to do with colleagues and friends and, and relatives is I like to point out the things that they do. Like I do that with you all the time. <laughs> I did that with you yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I just, I try to make that second, um, second nature because sometimes it, it's not, it wasn't always second nature for me to do that. And I also have to learn to kind of continue doing it for myself. Like I do it for other people. I got to learn to do it for myself. So he definitely, that experience of him definitely um, impacted me. My mom, you know, she was the opposite and, but she had a quiet strength about her. She kind of had to, because my dad was just very like, you know, outspoken, but so, but she had a quiet strength when things got too out of hand, she had a way of like shutting things down, but she didn't have to do it. So animated. So I definitely try to take, I think I inherited a lot of that from her. Like I'm pretty laid back and mellow. You have to do a lot to really get me to get upset. And so I get that from her. Um, it's a tie with the third person because it also just depends on like where I'm at in life. So right now, currently, I would put you on that list. That's definitely what? Got from that experience. I mean, a level of influence, yeah, like just okay. the way you handle stuff. And then, of course, I, I think of Bridget Cogley. She's in the data field. So I would say in terms of like this, you know, season of my life, there's been a lot of loss and grief and that she's been able to help me you know, it's kind of like grief counselor, therapist, and just coach. I would say the pieces that I get from both of you is that coaching part, like, yo, you can do this. And so I would just say that when I think about, you know, influential people, the list is way longer than three, but that's kind of where I'm at. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad, I'm honored to make the list. And um, we, we've talked about our parents, you know, offline and talked about our journeys and everything and, and dealing with the loss, but loss can be a good thing, right? It gets us to the new season. So, um, you know, I really, really appreciate you having me on the list and sharing the um, the season that you're in. But, you know, we're both getting towards the other side of it and, and definitely getting better and, and getting stronger. Yeah, and I would say the reason too, if like you and like the whole the boy challenge team, like I like what we've been able to create during this season. Like, so I just gotta talk about the challenge because it's been so yeah, so, I know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, by the time this tapes, lat it's gonna be a week after the boys' birthday week. But yeah. you know, his birthday, we're talking right now, his birthday just took place. And you know, that challenge was definitely something in that whole season of loss that I had to focus on and it just kind of brought me because I know you asked me earlier about what brought me to where I am today and so that challenge and this researching the boy kind of got me it led to one of the teaching jobs that I had that I have rather now so I just when I think about that whole time it's just like yeah you all like you Anthony and Chimdi and now Rashid I mean all of you it's just been fun um just researching uh the boy and just kind of getting the community more involved with him so. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. It's been great. It's great to see the expansion and how it's growing and how it's going to keep growing. You know, we got some stuff at Fisk. We, you know, we can't give you everything right now, but we're going to, you know, we um, we got some stuff under our sleeves. So be on the lookout for it. All right, Alan, where can the listeners find you online? All right. So I am on LinkedIn. So you can definitely find me, Alan Hillary, LinkedIn. You'll see the name here. And also I'm on Twitter. So AL, it's not AI, AL, Al Data Viz Guy on Twitter. And those are the two main places you can find me. So, yeah. Oh, and follow the the boy challenge tagline. Got to plug that one too. I got to plug it. Got to plug it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, shout out to my dog, Alan, again, man. Appreciate you, your brotherhood and everything that you do. So thanks for hopping on. I'm going to give you your flowers while we're on here. Um, and if you haven't already, good people, please like, share, subscribe. And we will talk to you all next week. Y'all have a great day.